coming at you, buddy. Here we go. All right, folks, I get this question a whole lot. What do I do in the top fuel car? When we're ready to make a run, obviously I've got my fire suit on, but the helmet be on, seat belts, all that stuff, nice and tight, ready to go. The first thing that happens, the crew chief will stick his hand around here and make a little spinning motion. And all they're going to do at that point is spin the engine over. We want to make sure there's no nitro in the cylinders because if it is, it literally can explode the engine just that quick with no ignition on, no anything. So that's the first thing you see happen. You'll hear the engine spin over. You. All right, we're gonna spin it. And then at that point, I'm going to push the clutch pedal in, which is gonna be really hard to see. I've got on my fancy shoes, but there is a normal clutch pedal down here. I'm gonna push the clutch pedal in and I'm gonna reach right over here and grab a handful of brake and I'll have my foot installed in the stomp the loud pedal button. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a, a, tow, a tow loop here and a foot cup right there. So your foot is literally inserted into the throttle pedal, the old loud pedal. And the crew chief will then reach in and tell me to flip the switches on. This is the ignition switch. This is the race pack data system switch, and this loads the clutch system. So I'll turn those switches on. I'll push this button. I typically count to like three. And when I let off of it, you'll hear a little psh of the air system being charged. Holding the brake, clutch pedal in, no throttle, none whatsoever. And I will wait until I hear the car start on gasoline. We actually start these cars on gas. 87 octane cheap gas. When I hear it start, this is the fuel pump lever. I'll turn the fuel all the way on and that's when you will see all the smoke start coming out and all the stinkiness that is nitro. So once it's fully running on nitro, I will look at the dash. This number right here is fuel flow. This is fuel pressure. And then on this side of the dash, oh, I forgot to show this. This is oil pressure. So those are three important numbers that I look at. This side of the dash is actually timing of the mags. I do kind of take a look at that, but it's not really that important because there's nothing that can be done about it. In the center, it does have a, a sweep gauge of RPM. This zero right here will come up with idle speed. So once the car is running fully on nitro, I will trim this back, looking at these numbers on the dash, and I will set this fuel flow number according to what the crew chief wants. We adjust that sum according to if it's hot or cold outside. And all we're doing by that is getting our engine temperature where we want it. These things do not have cooling in them. So the more fuel we add, the cooler the engine runs. And so once I achieve where that needs to be, the team is back there adjusting idle. So the idle speed is being done with air bleeds and they have a particular engine RPM that they want this thing to be at, idling in neutral. All this is done fairly quick. You guys have watched enough of these videos to, to kind of know what that's like. All right, they're ready for us. Switch is on, air on. Fuel in it. All right, here we go. Once they're done, the crew chief will kind of run past me. And at that point, I will start to let the clutch off and the brake. I just start taking my foot off the clutch. I don't dump it. I don't do it real fast, but it allows the car to start rolling forward. You'll roll through the water box area. The crew chief will then tell you, you know, he'll make a motion and I will hit the throttle. I don't use a throttle stop. so. 
I don't know if you can see which side, but you literally will just barely crack the throttle open. It's just a very small movement for the big massive burnouts. So in my head, I just kind of have an idea of how far I want to go on the burnout. Try to do the same thing every time because it's very important for not only engine temperature, but also clutch temperature. So I do my burnout, step off the throttle. I do not just grab the brakes immediately. I push the clutch back in and I'm in neutral. I let the car roll a little bit. And at that point, I'll grab the brakes and stop. And right here, this lever here, we do not really have a transmission. We have forward and reverse. So I'll stop. I will move this lever into the reverse gear, which is there. And I'll start working my foot in and off of the clutch pedal to back up, to maintain whatever speed I want backing up. It's just a little in, out. Again, never, ever hitting the throttle at all. So I'll back up to where the team tells me they're, they're good. I'll stop. I'll simply put the car back in forward gear. pretty hard and just waiting for them to make adjustments. Again, they're mainly looking at engine RPM. And at that point, they'll tell me to pull forward. I'll roll forward and constantly checking, making sure my fuel flow numbers correctly. I do that at the end of the burnout. But once I pull forward, I actually charge the clutch system again. So all I'm doing is pushing this button, which puts the throw out bearing in position for a run. Once the crew chief gives me the wave in, what I do at that point, I close my visor on the helmet and I will work the clutch in and out again, turn the top stage bulb on, I'll reach over, pull the fuel all the way on. And then I really get a handful of brake and I actually take my foot completely off the clutch pedal and I move my clutch pedal leg and foot to the center of the car. And essentially all I'm doing is bracing myself. So the clutch pedal is now out and I have put my foot over here to brace myself. I will finish staging the car by working the brake handle. Just gently bump it in, boom. Both stage lights are now on. I'm concentrating on the Christmas tree. When I see that yellow flash, bam, hit the throttle, grab the wheel, and you're off and running headed down the road. these things according to what the car does it's a lot of gentle movements with the wheel it's never big slashing movements the car's constantly trying for the back to pass the front dragsters kind of do this going down the racetrack and so you're making just nice gentle movements i have picked a target out at the end of the racetrack peripherally i'm paying attention to where the cones are 60 foot 330 half track and thousand foot mile an hour. As I'm going down the racetrack here, let's just assume it's a really good run. I've driven the thing just a little bit. As I'm approaching the thousand foot mile an hour mark, which is 66 foot before the finish line, I will have let go of the, the steering wheel. I sit there hold the brake. So I've drove the thing down the racetrack. I will just simply reach over and at the mile an hour light, I'll push this lever forward, which is what lets the parachutes out. I feel the parachutes hit, step, I've stepped off the throttle, and you gently work the brakes to bring the car to a stop. At that point, you reach over, 
cut the switches off, shut the fuel off, and hopefully you just completed a 3.6 something second ride at over 330 miles. quick rundown of what I have to do inside a top fuel car. Now you could drive a top fuel car too.